Welcome, guys. Uh, it's another edition of Libations, and today's one is special. It's special because um, I think five, six episodes in, this is the first time uh, I'm actually going to be talking to a, another friend of mine. But this, but this, in this instance, the first female guest um, wow. on on Libation. So this is a special, spe very special moment for me, yeah, and um, I trust you're going to love this this conversation that I'm going to have with this special friend of mine. Uh, Ujuaku Akukwe, yeah. filmmaker, storyteller, um, curator of tastes and experience, but most of all, a very beautiful human being. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Emeka. My pleasure. Um, we have this tradition, yeah? Mm -hmm. So every time someone comes to this my home and comes on this show, I will offer them some... Uh, after all, the show is called Libation, so we will... We will pour some drink. Okay. Well, we, will pour, we, may, we may not necessarily pour it on the ground. We can pour it into our stomach, as they say. And I have the case, case against the queer. Come on, my young guy, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Well, whatever. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay. Have some. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. You're there's some osoji. Mm. Okay. So, can I eat this now? Oh, yes, please. Please, mm. please. And, right. and, and I'll join you as well. I'll, I'll grab a bite. But you know, we have to be careful because we're on TV and this thing <laughs> might be very enjoyable, but it does mm -hmm. tend to leave a mark. Sometimes the, mm. the green bits refuse to leave your, your teeth. Mm. Mm. But anyhow, we'll be back after the break and I'll tell you a little bit more about my friend Uju. And then we'll, we'll continue from there. We'll carry on our conversation. So see you guys in a bit. You're welcome to Libations and uh, thank you. Cheers. You're always looking beautiful. <laughs> As always. As always. That's like, man, you know that saying when people mm -hmm. say, when I grow up, I want to be like you. I can't quite, no, I said I want to be a he, she, a ha, she. But, <laughs> but I love the way you look. It's, thank you. It's, it's, it's great. And cheers Appreciate again. it. Thank you. So, my first question. It's basically, how would you like someone to, how would you, how would you like to be described? What's, what's, what drives you and how would you like to be described? Because I see from your bio, I, I read it for the audiences. You say you're a storyteller, an indigenous storyteller. And I can tell that because, uh, you know, you've done some great documentary work, Afia Attack. Mm -hmm. And what's the other documentary? Irigi, Harvest of Pride. Harvest of Pride, yes. And, um... In that documentary, the the Afia attack, which tells the story of the civil war and the the role of the women, role of women yeah, during the, the during, during the, the civil war, and it, it spoke to me because uh, my mom was one of those people during the civil war. Mm. Um, they used to call her Nurse Eliza. She was one of those. She wasn't trained as a nurse, but she was sort of deputized during the war okay. to help uh, the sick and wounded. And so the story of this women during the war that went uh, almost as you know what it is on this mission. To, mm -hmm. to provide for their family. Uh, it's an incredible... And for the entire Biafra yeah. nation, yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Well done for that. Thank you. So tell me, um, how would you see yourself? Just a storyteller? Um, mm, there's something you left out. Yeah. I'm also a cultural expert. Yeah. So how would I want to be described? First of um, an indigenous storyteller. So I like telling the stories of my people. So when I say my people, the Igbo people, yeah story of Africa, um, story of personal stories, family um, history. So I like people to talk about themselves, talk about their families and have them documented. So because I believe storytelling is all about humanity, about sharing information, and that's what we do every day. So instead of sitting down and manufacturing stories, you can actually look in words mm -hmm. and find stories about yourself, about your family, about your kids. So you can tell story about you, document them mm -hmm. for, for the future, tell story about your village, tell story about your town, about Nigeria, about Enugu State, about Anambra State. So that's the kind of thing I love to do. Mm -hmm. that's, that's incredible because I think that, I know that sometime last year, um, I was invited by the Center for Memories. They have this monthly event that they call the Katam when I was asked to speak on um, you know, storytelling in, a, in a, this new digital world. Um, do you think with you know that I know as Ndibo that we're doing enough, we're telling enough of these our stories? 
No, we've not even scratched the surface. And you know, it's it's it can be frustrating because this is a place that have have so many stories to tell. So we when you look at the let me give you an example. So when you look at the Oja, everybody's talking yeah. maybe with the Oja piano, because like the, the piano music, yeah, yeah. exactly. So during my TEDx talk, I I said that you can actually tell a story about our music, musical instruments. We have the Oja, we have the Udu, we have the Ugene. And these are not just musical instruments that sort of spiritual as yeah. well. So there are stories back in them that when you dig deep, you find out those stories and connect them to anything you want to connect them to. So when you look at the our folklores, our folk tales, mm -hmm. we have so many stories that when you delve into them, you can use it to reimagine other stories yeah. that can, you know, address societal ills or values. And you can also reimagine it for a wider audience, for a global audience. So we've not mm -hmm. started telling our stories, and that's one thing. I it, think it, we should start when doing. When you talked about, as you were talking, you talked about the Oja piano, of course, and the Ogene. Um, I was, I was with. Um, I went to see the Udo. Yeah. I don't even know. I, yeah, I went to see is a it a drum? <laughs> yeah, the uh, uh, it's, it's a drum. There's a, there's an Ikenga drum. There's a, exactly. a Koro. There's all kinds of. Mm -hmm. um, and I was telling this other gentleman, and then somebody else has said, "Oh, we can do." Use organic music. I said, I hope you understand that organic music is a fighting music. It, it's it's a music that moves people. It's not a music. It's not it's not an instrument you play when you want to be calm. When you want to calm people down, it, just listening to that thing, your your instinct is to get up and do something yes. and go somewhere. It's not if you listen to organic music. It's not it, the music. It, it motivates yeah, people. It, yeah, it, it is. It is. Mm. It is fantastically motivational. Um. And to think that, I mean, so we do have the need to tell even what it means, what Ogene means. Um, I completely agree with you that we need more storytellers. Do you think, though, that um, in Enugu, in Anambra State, in the whole, in the, in the southeast, what do you think that is not allowing us to tell those stories? Hmm. I, I think that I mean, this is this is the this is the land, this is the region that gave us uh, Chimamanda, Achebe. Um, and, and so we have storytellers, don't we? Yeah, we, we do have storytellers, and these storytellers came from here. Uh, but right now, that not here. They don't have these young ones mm -hmm. coming up. They, are, they don't have the guidance. And the kind of um, the society we live in now, they have lots of distractions, yeah. you know, and the economy is also not... Um, allowing people to dive into their creativity to come up with these stories. So, so you hunger find, is the problem, right? No, <laughs> hunger is not. I would say hunger is the problem. Yeah. But um, I would say that people want to, you know, put in effort and sort of have monetary value mm -hmm. for that effort. So, and they also need a guide. So if we are telling this story, so somebody will look at Chimamanda and say, oh, she's a beautiful storyteller, but oh, she's not in Nigeria. So it means that whatever story she's telling, she's making money from the from, yeah, from a wider that. audience, yeah. the international audience. So a, a young person, I was, um, you know, having a conversation with a young person the other day, and she said, like, uh, of course, I can write beautiful um, mm. books like Chimamanda, but who will buy them? Because I'm here. I said, start first. Yeah, but, but didn't Chimamanda... Okay. You know, start didn't, first. Didn't, didn't Chimamanda first start here? She started here, isn't it? Obviously. Yes. Yeah. But the time of Chimamanda and the young yeah. people who have the, yeah. the Gen Zs, it's, you know, these, these guys now want to put in something and get something immediately. immediately. And again, in Southeast, when it comes to creativity and storytelling and arts, it, it's, it's as though people don't see the value yet mm. here. And they think that, if you want to make it, you have to leave in Southeast entirely and move to um, Lagos. Lagos. I understand why they think that way. So what we are trying to do is to let them know that you can actually stay here is, is, and the, make it here. Let us speak of um, not just what you've, what you've done with the documentaries and the stories that you're telling using the visual medium and, and so on. But the fact that you, you you know you have this platform that you created a few years ago called uh, Enif, um, which is the 
Eastern Nigeria International Film Festival. Yeah. Um, how has it been since you started? What's the what's what's been like the the feedback from people? You getting support from government? Are you getting support from corporates? Um, um, what's it been like? It's been it's been fantastic. So it's it's actually Eastern Nigerian Film and Arts okay. Initiative. It's a non profit organization. So we invest in film and media training. Um, in southeast of Nigeria, grooming young talent to tell authentic African stories. Yeah. Uh, it's been it's been okay. Um, uh, I think we we'll need more support from government, from mm -hmm. um, private sector. But one thing we are doing is that we've identified that in this part of the world that we need to create a a, a hub. So that that can feed into the a larger hub that's the Nigeria yeah. creative ecosystem, because I believe that Nigeria is too dynamic to have just yeah, one centralized yeah. uh, creative ecosystem. So how about to have the again, eastern part, east, the eastern part, part, the, the northern, south, yeah. south, south, southwest, yeah. you know, all coming together, and whatever we are bringing together as to the GDP of the nation. Yeah. So. For for any so Eastern Nigeria International Film Festival is a is it's a baby it's a it's a baby of Eastern Nigerian Film and Arts Initiative and when we started in 2020 there was nothing like a film fest there was no film festival happening in any part of the southeast of Nigeria so we said okay let's bring this um, home so that our young people will actually attend film festivals mm -hmm. and and know how it the feels like it. so what yeah. we do is we give upcoming filmmakers especially and it's deliberate to submit their films to our film festival and we'll give them a platform to showcase what they have and we'll also bring facilitators you know we'll organize workshops master classes mm -hmm. uh, so that they can you know gain the skill to be able to I don't want to say compete, no, to be to, to be to, at to, par to take their with arts. the yeah, yeah, yeah with their counterparts, with their colleagues in different mm. um, regions. Okay. Hold yeah. that thought though. Um, I, I I don't want us to sort of um, there's the key questions I wanted to ask you. Like okay. some of them personal. Oh, that's mind. that's okay. That's okay. Okay, we'll be back. Uh, we'll go for a quick break, and you know how they say it. This is TV. Somebody has to pay for these things. So we're going to break and then we'll, we'll be back and then we'll continue our conversation with the Joe Yes? Is that okay? Yes. All right. So catch us back in a, in a minute or so. We'll be back. Thank you. Guys, you're welcome back to Libations. Um, you know, just before I went on the break, I was talking to, I'm still talking to, who is a storyteller, uh, curator of experiences, cultural experiences. I think that's the way I like to put it. And she was telling us about um, some of the initiatives she's, she has got going on, um, especially for, the, for this region, for the Southeast region. Um, talked about any of the film festival, talked about how she's promoting young people to learn the skills to, to tell more stories. Um, but I want to ask you... Uh, um, is there something that sort of motivated you? Is there something in your background growing up? Um, I, I also know you're, you know, deeply, vastly traveled. Interesting, you know, so you've been all across the world. So is there something from your background, from your childhood, uh, something that sort of motivates you or has motivated you into doing this line of work? Um, because I, I hear all the time, someone says, oh, I went to medical school, but I decided to become a filmmaker or decided to do this. Do you share that same story or or um, you just, from ab initial, as a young girl, you said, I'm going to be telling stories? I think uh, as a young girl, I grew up, um, I had parents, especially my father, that always tell us stories, I, stories about my culture, our tradition. Then I'm privileged to have Great grand, I met my great grand um, mother, then my grandmother, and from my maternal side, and they also they are storytellers in the sense that, you know, anytime we we'll travel to the village, they always told, tell us stories about our people, yeah. and um, I'm also privileged to hear stories about my great grandfather. I didn't meet him. 
but I learned a lot from those stories. So growing up, it, storytelling has always been a part of my of of my family. Yeah. So having parents that always tell us, okay, no matter where you're going to, remember that Nisino no where Potter. So you are from a this home. Is, you're from this particular place. And yeah. not just being from home, you are Nibo, you are Nibo girl. Then, but now they say oh, you are Nibo woman. So that's sort of shaped my my career, and also. Uh, at school, I studied sociology, mm -hmm. then studied um, filmmaking, documentary filmmaking at the F New York Film Academy, Los Angeles campus. So that also, like, I'm doing what I feel like I'm mm -hmm. doing what yeah. I'm You're destined yeah. to to do. So yeah, so it's, from it's, my from my childhood, mm -hmm. it's always been about telling stories, traditional stories, mm -hmm. not just any stories, but traditional stories. So um, is it? I I did. I promise you, I did warn you rather that okay. I was going to ask you this though. How much of your, um, uh, your makeup as a, as a human as a, as a, is, do you credit to the cultural side of things or the spiritual side of things? Um, you know, I'm trying to use grammar to, to, to disguise this question of, of, of no, spirituality. Okay. Yeah. What does it mean to you as, as an Igbo person? You know, how much value do you place on? Um, because on this show, we often talked about the core concepts of what it means to be Igbo. You know, the Onyaya and Awanea and the the philosophy of um, of Igwebike that you know we we progress in unity or we make progress as a united person, and that no one should leave. For those who are non Igbo who are watching this, Onyaya and Awanea simply means do not leave your brethren behind and if you're successful try and bring uh, how much of that core evil spirituality and mm -hmm. um, how much of it does it mean to you do you believe do you see um, the role of your the call you've talked about your cultural background talked about your, your grandparents how much of storytellers there were and how much of that that has sort of um, you know influenced who you are today but talk to me about the, the spiritual side of, because I think as an Igbo person, um, we are guided by, I think, I believe that every proper Igbo person should be guided by these two pr or core principles of what it means to be Igbo. You know, Igwebike, um, we stand together for progress or we come together for progress. And we also genuinely believe in the in the cause of um, um, you know, um, no one should leave, you know, um, um, Almost like the U.S. Marine motto, no one <laughs> leave no one behind, so to speak. So, how much of that influence, uh, that core spiritual concept, and what does it mean to you? You know, in, in this age, where the average person, the average African, the average Igbo person, with Western influences of religion, and still acknowledging the spirituality of being Igbo or tradition. Was it, was it, is there a conflict? In, in um, personally, as an Igbo yeah. woman and Igbo person, you can't really separate for people that, uh, that really want to understand the truth. So someday, you know, we have facts, we have truth. So it depends on who, in, how you're viewing it. So personally, I don't separate our cultural values from our spiritual values. Somehow they are intertwined, yeah. So for me, growing up, like I refer to my father, who um, is late, yeah, but so my so. father, like I've always been a daddy's girl. So I grew up under him. And I, in my family, they would tell me, oh, whatever you do, that your father can never see any faults mm. in that. So that's how much, but how close. It's very special. It exactly. reminds me of my, my <laughs> fetch if you're watching this now. See, 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 see now. <laughs> So I'm an original yeah. daddy's girl. And I've never seen my dad go to church. Hmm. Yeah. So, and not because I'm saying... But that this, didn't make him less of a human being. He was a it? perfect human being. Nobody's perfect, but yeah. he was almost perfect. An excellent man. So he never, i never seen him in church, but he always received a word from church. And why? Because of his principles. So when you talk about Igbo values... We're talking about Onye, Onye, Yanawanea, talking about Iwebike. 
And I would like to add integrity, mm -hmm. hard work. So we have these Imambo. values, mm -hmm. Imambo. And when you take it to Imwa here, but that is we're talking about honesty. Yeah. We're talking about truth. We're talking about the principle of standing for what is right. Yeah. So these are all embedded in our spirituality. Because when you research about the Igbo spirituality, there are things that people do now that you dare not do in those days. And even now, people that actually adhere to Igbo spirituality, you can't find them cheating, you can't find them stealing, mm -hmm. you can't find them, you know, on equal to you know, mm -hmm. like an individual yeah. in, 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 individualism. Yeah, yeah. But you can see that in the Igbo society now, it's all about individual mm. strength. Don't you think that, I think, I listened to um, Professor Patu Tommy when he spoke, um, I, I think well last year as well, early last year, sometime last year, June or July last year, and he talked about how the Igbo society um, is suffering today because of the fallout from the Civil War and how we have, um, you know, we've moved from that consciousness of Oyaya and Awania, WBK and so on. And then because of the trauma of the Civil War, we've sort of like um, gone back into our shell and everybody's more become more individualistic. So the hustle, we just have to make it. And that has sort of, um, wh while the hustle has been primarily an Igbo thing, you know, we are we hustle, hard working, we, yeah. hard working. But we've sort of um, forgotten these two other, um, mm -hmm. other principles and it's now, uh, you know, the scarcity mentality has sort of, you know, progressed more. In, in our society and how that reflects poorly on us. Um, you know, but I like where this discussion is going. Um, so for you personally, where, do you stand? How much, how much, of, a, how much of a Christian church-going person are you? I, I can't remember the last time I've been in church. Mm. So what I do is I connect with my ancestors. So when I say things like this, people go like, what mm. are you talking about? But there's something I tell people. Christianity came into Africa, and that's a very beautiful thing. But I asked him one question. Before Christianity, our forefathers, what were they practicing? So are we going to throw away that and call it barbaric? No. So I, I've just given you a story about my father. And I came from a generation of powerful men. So my great-grandfather, Yezukoli Wan of Nobi, that's Idemili, mm. he was a Dibia. He was a king. And he was a healer. So he was operating on people. I'm talking about in 1920s, 1910. Far back as then, he was operating on people. So what was he using? Herbs. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about our spirituality, it's not what people are talking about yeah. now, like Oguego, like mm. merch, um, um, blood money. Yeah. So in the Igbo spirituality, there's nothing like blood money. In Igbo spirituality, there is nothing like, you know, killing people for wealth, for these or for that. But we, had, we still have herbs for healing, we'll still have our waters for cleansing, yeah. we'll still have the things we do for progress. So instead of killing people for money, you pray and connect with your ancestors to receive progress, it's, to gain yeah. enough to clear your path. It's insightful and I think that uh, I'm, I'm grateful in having this conversation with you because it's, it connects with me also because I've, I've always said on this, on this show, part of the reason why I'm doing this show is also um, having conversations with friends and rediscovering my own Igbo-ness, my own Igbo identity, because I think that uh, my background is uh, my, my father is a retired soldier, so lived in every part of Nigeria, um, you know, um, not really, I, I, I can't say that Igbo was my first language, you know, if anything, I would say that my first language was Pidgin, <laughs> Barak's <laughs> Pidgin, because that's what, you know, yeah. um, you know, um, and so, it's in later years I'm rediscovering uh, all of the sides of, of, of my own being and, and I'm grateful for having 
seeing someone who shares a similar yeah. faith. Because we see this thing where I think someone joked, I think it was the late uh, president of Ghana, um, Gerald Rawlings, said something to the effect that, you know, um, how to stem corruption in, in Africa. And he said, it's not by swearing by the Christian or, or, or holy books of the former religions, that if you ask someone to use something like this <laughs> and swear, uh, a piece of wood or iron from his village, deity, uh, a deity that most people will, will True. first they will back out True. Uh, because the people are more scared. And I've had instances where um, there's a quarrel, there's a tussle over land, and who owns what land, and you know the traditionalists will say, "Don't worry, just let's go to the land. You make your own, you know, statement that you own the land and swear an oath to the land to Allah." No, I get one way. And, and most people will back out because sure. they know that it's almost as if, I know it's been said in jokes and memes over the social media and places like that, that uh, our gods are less forgiving. <laughs> it appears to be less forgiving than, than um, uh, uh, traditional, you know, Western or, or other, other religions. But I, I, I think that um, it's some, but there's a conflict, isn't there? Okay, well, what's, what's the conflict? I mean, the fact that, you know, you find... I, well, I see some of that conflict mm -hmm. where you find a lot of people in denial. Mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. In denial of, of, of that, you know. Or they'll tell you, oh, okay, I can be Igbo, I can be Christian, uh, but I can be spiritual, but I can't recognize. And then they vilify people who... You see it all the time. I've, I mean, I've read about it. I've seen pictures where people, um, Christians, will go and break down someone's traditional uh, OB or break down somebody's traditional uh, where the person is yeah. making his uh, sacrifices and so. I'll, I'll I'll call that ignorance and you know brainwashing when pe people fear what they don't understand. So when we talk about God, Chupu, and by the way, we have one God. So whether name you, any name any you name want to you give mean. you, call it Hindu, Christianity, um, whatever name you give it, you have only one God, which the Igbo spirituality understands, yeah. and that is Chuhu, Chuhu Kike, Chuhu Kika Abiyama, the God, the revealer of knowledge, yeah? Then we have the Chi, like every Igbo person, person yeah. every person, not just Igbo person, who believe in the concept of Chi, so you, it's like it's your spirit guide. And when people tend to ignore this glaring truth, you know, all we, all we have to do is to keep explaining to them. Mm -hmm. And I understand spirituality and I understand Christianity. I've been one of, or, or was all, almost being made a pastor in, in my former church. And I understand why people shy away from these things because of the level um, of voodoo. It's mm -hmm. not with this Igbo spirituality, they don't, it's not about voodoo, it's about connecting, connecting to God first and connecting to your ancestors, which Christianity, especially Catholics, you know, they also practice that yeah. same, same Vicent, same yeah, James, they, also respect, all the, all the, the they dead, respect that. Yeah. So yeah. all those saints are their ancestors, the ancestors of the Western, of the Western religion, or the Western, Western church, religion yeah. or Western church. We have our ancestors from where I come from. My Chukura family, my Naoba, mm. and my grandfather, my great grandfather. So I respect them. I also acknowledge them. I also call on them. My father, Onichi Akokalia, I also, he's late now. So they are my ancestors. So there is nothing wrong with the Igbo ancestors or anybody's ancestors and when people see people that connect to your ancestors as practicing evil and i'm like how mm. so our ancestors have they done anything bad yeah some of them must have yeah, even gone the wrong way even Just as we like, leave even even the fact that i mean you must have had stories even as modern day christians some christians still commit the most heinous crimes exactly uh, in fact as someone who once said i don't know one of those historians who says the most evil has been committed by the most religious exactly. people. Exactly. You know, um, so it is, it is, I think fundamentally, and, and it's important we're having this conversation and to those who are watching, I mean, you find that, I, I wrote this, I speak personally for myself, that um, Igbo cosmology and Igbo spirituality, I mm -hmm. mean, the little I know of it, speaks of humanity first. Humanity, the pressing. 
the Simple. individual, the person and his, and his relationship with his family and with his community. First, um, before you even start talking about anything else, it's, it's your humanity. Is your humanity attuned to your family? Is it attuned to your community? Your community. Is it attuned to the earth? And if, it, if it's, you know, that's my understanding so far. True. I mean, the little I know of it. If it's tuned in that way, then I think that, um, uh, you know, you want. And I, and I don't see how that, even though I spoke of conflict, but I don't see how that is in itself um, a bad thing, as you were saying. It's, it's not a bad it's thing, is it? It's not a bad thing. It's a powerful thing yeah. to find yourself in that space where before you do anything, you think about the next person. Even the Bible says, do unto others as you if want you them to. Yeah. So it's all about yourself and humanity, your community. You know, it's all about paying attention to mm -hmm. things that matter. It's all about this Anna you mentioned that's a female goddess. It's about respecting the land. Mm. So it's not about doing things that we wouldn't want another person to do to, to, you. to, do to you. So it's about love, it's about sharing, it's about caring. So for me, that's what Igbo spirituality is all about. So it's not what people make it to be. Then we have deities, which in itself is not bad. So when you see the um, the Virgin Mary, Virgin Mary is not is no longer alive, but people still go there to do what to pray, to, to look yeah. for succor, for care. So it's just that's exactly what the ordinary people like the Igbo spirituality. That's what they do. So they go to all these that, things. That, that and reminds they... me. We just started a new show, and I think mm -hmm. you guys should check it out. Um, it's called Ordinana as well. Oh, really? Okay. TV. Yeah, we just started. Oh, wow. And we have this I'm young fantastic. Um, um, Igbo spiritual. He comes from the Dibia. It's a very fascinating character. I mean, I listened to, to him one time. I was fascinated by a young guy, but I was fascinated uh, by his depth of thought and reasoning. And um, So I encourage you guys to check it out on, on, on Afia TV. It's coming soon. I think it comes on Sundays, Sundays, I think, Sunday afternoon, 5 p.m. But we'll, we'll double check so you can find the, the link um, on the, we'll put it on the lower part of the screen at the time that the show. Will. So at this point, we'll, we'll take a, another quick break. And then when we come back, uh, I'm going to delve a bit more personally. Your kids, are you yeah. transferring the same thing from your dad <laughs> gave you to your kids? And what life is, because I know... At the time when I call you, oh, I'm in, uh, I'm in the UK, I'm in America, I'm in this and this. Where do you live, sir? I live in Abuja, Nigeria. Okay, we'll be back <laughs> soon. <laughs> See you guys in a minute. Um, guys, welcome back. I, I hope you poured yourself a drink and you're, you know, and you're enjoying us in this libation because this, this show is... Is it, it's, it comes to you at this time of the, of the day because we want you to sit back, uh, pour yourself a drink, some palm wine, some wine if you want. Sometimes, so this is it. On the show, if my guest likes wine, I drink wine during them. If they like beer, I drink beer. If they like palm wine, if they like a little bit of strong drink, oh, uh -huh, I'll try but you're not even drinking your. I mean, drinks. are you? We have I've more been, drink. I've been drink. drinking. Drink kids. I've been drinking. Drink, so drink. so that this is so done. that you go talk. I'll still drink. Uh -huh. So because and you know I love wine. I was, so yeah, I was telling you what my my mom <laughs> says. says yeah. um, be careful of someone who always has a guarded tongue, doesn't say anything, and doesn't drink because uh, they always harbor some sinister things. So you know why I like coming to your house. Mm. You have the best choices of wine like yeah, for, for, so i don't you. know how you curate that but i love mm. coming here thank you i i try i have <laughs> this friend of mine his father actually named him after um a wine wine a winery in mm. italy um we call him ba barolo okay can you imagine somebody that his father named him <laughs> after wine um I won't mention his full name here, but <laughs> he knows himself when he says it. Anyhow, so so I was just before I went on the break, I was I was I was gonna say to you, um, you got three beautiful kids, three beautiful girls. Um, and and I know they're you know, they're abroad, aren't they? Yes. They're in school, you said they they're in college. They're in college, okay. Yeah. Are you are you concerned or do you feel that um, you're giving them 
the same energy, the same powerful testimony of your cultural and spiritual thing that you inherited from your from are you concerned that they you know being abroad they've not lost their, themselves lost their connection to our you know to our, to our I'll, spirituality i will say one thing first thing you know that's not a go you guys so that. it means like a lion a a, a tiger so I use Does tiger. Not give birth to Does, yeah, exactly. So we say it in <laughs> we say uh, lion or the bomb baboon. Something Ex like that. Yes. But that's, yeah, exactly. But that's, that's... So with my kids, yeah. they understand where I stand. And I'm not the type like, oh, you're in abroad and you don't come home. So no, they come home. Okay. And there's something I learned from my father. Everybody, all my siblings will all have Igbo names. So and not just Igbo names, we have strong Igbo. Yeah. Yeah. Name. So you see us, you are not guessing. So it started by, you know, giving them powerful Igbo names and always telling them, not going Igbo, mm -hmm. Igbo, just the way, you know, yeah. my parents raised me. So for me, it's about showing them. You're not dictating the to them, but they, not, they, they, they see you and then they So follow, they see yeah. me, they understand it. And one thing I love about my kids, and that's how I grew up. I grew up as a very inquisitive person, even till today. People are like, why do you always ask why? Why? Yeah. Because I say, I ask why, because that's I want question. to that's, learn. That's the birth word. You so know, I'm always you like, you why, 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 why? Someone will do why, something why? and I ask them, says, what? you said the most beautiful thing. Oh, I did it. I'm like, why? And they go, because when you ask why, if people are not prepared, that's when you find out that. Exactly. Yeah, so they always ask you, mommy, why do you so, mommy, why? So these days when they see something on the internet about, oh, mommy, oh, you talked about this, oh, mommy, this, oh, mommy, that. So that's the legacy I'm leaving for my kids, to live in a world where nobody can shut them down. It doesn't matter the religion, they, it, they, they practice. Mm -hmm. So it's not about, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a this or that. It's about, are you a good person? First of all, are you a good human being? Are you being? a good human being? Yeah. So uh, how do you relate with the society? How do you relate with people you meet on the way in your path? How do you, do you, are you a respectful person? Yeah. Are you a person of integrity? So that is the values I'm living for my, for my beautiful girls. Pretty, the, yeah. They're very fortunate girls, very fortunate kids. I honestly, they're very fortunate to have you as a Thank mother. Thank you. And, um, you know, it's good. Good listening to you. I could tell that you're living it. I, I have a, um, the show is ending as most beautiful things come to an end. But I'm, you know, I'll beg my producers we're squeezing it, it a minute or two. The thing I want to ask as we we end this conversation is, you live in Abuja now. Uh, a lot of your work you do in the East is a lot of the storytelling you do. You often come to the East. Like I'm fortunate to to grab you here <laughs> and for us to have this conversation. How do you see the Southeast physically? What's going on? Do you have hope for, for us? Do you, do you see progress? And, you know, what, what do you see? Um, it, it, uh, God help me. You yeah, know why I'll say? say because um, I'm one of those that say things as they are. So sometimes people tell me, oh, you have to be where you want to talk, be just be diplomatic. So how do I see Southeast? Uh, first, I would say that the, the governor of Enugu State right now, like um, Peter Mr. Amba. Peter Amba. Dr. Peter Amba, yeah. Okay, Dr. Peter Amba, it's doing his best and I appreciate what he's doing, especially, you know, to curtail the insecurities yeah. going on here. So I, I, I will call on everyone to, you know, support him mm -hmm. in the work he's doing. So where do I see Southeast in in the larger scheme of Nigeria, especially in the creative industry where I yeah. play, I would say that whatever that it is that's going on here, it's not funny. Mm. And um, in look at Imo State, Anambra, we are, I'm from Oka, mm. by the way, um, Imo, Ebony, we are lagging behind. So we have youths that are just wasting away mm. and there is no collaboration the leaders don't even understand the power of storytelling, the power of media, and or even how to guide, galvanize and harness these this, this skills and talents yeah. of these young ones. 
and the insecurities, the IPOB, the madness going on is appalling and it's sad and it can be so frustrating. Yeah. So it's not, I, I look at here, the, the first time I came here when we started uh, Eastern Nigeria International Film Festival, and I came here and I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm sorry for, excuse my yeah, language. This, so, this show comes after the watershed. <laughs> so what is, yeah. what, is, what is going on here? All the BS happening here. And I, I told my co-founder, as Chris Odile, that I'm done. It's, I, we can be supporting them. I know last them. year, last year. <laughs> We had, I think you, on your thing, you know, the American people were supposed to come and they uh, express yeah. a lot of doubt because of the insecurity. And it, the, it, yeah. So you can imagine that. And about three months ago, they beheaded one a, a, a the staff of... Security, yeah, of the U.S. At, at, um, I yeah. mean, and these are our partners. So how do you even begin to explain? So yeah. when you go to international uh, donors and you want to attract these investments here, and they're telling you your place is not safe. So what do you do? So whatever it is that is going on here, and the people that are actually causing this nonsense here don't even live here. So whatever it is that is going on here, I just want to appeal to everyone, please, mm -hmm. let it stop. Because we are harming ourselves. Yeah. And I'm saying this because in the next three, four, five years, we'll start, you know, shouting about, oh, they're marginalizing us in the film industry. No. Because we are causing this. And People this is, want to come. This is us then. But they, are, pretty they can much, come. Pretty much the Southeast was almost like ground zero for the creative sector uh, when NTA set up exactly. production. You had, uh, you know, um, uh, Basi and Company. You had uh, the Village Headmaster production here. You had, uh, I remember my, my big uncle, Peter, who was head of NTA. Exactly. NTF. I mean, so there's great things that were happening here, uh, you know, in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, a lot of, all the big actors mm -hmm. uh, come from this region. But like you said, everybody has, because of this and maybe other things. Yeah, if has... you want to come here, you are like, oh, uh, should I come? Oh, you know, yeah. you are checking the flight, you are checking the hotel, you are going to stay. You are, it, it, you are making calls. Yeah. You are agitated. Like, I'm coming out today. I'm like, am I safe? So it's not funny. So I want to appeal to everyone. I mean, shit your sword. It's not, yeah. we have to build this community. We have to build the creative ecosystem and the creative, in Southeast. And I think um, the creative industry has a great role to play because an all-commerce industry, I mean, one, one movie production, you can have as many as 50, 60 people on it. So everybody can, you know, I mean, someone said, all right, I think I said that <laughs> many years ago. I used to say, so, so someone had me to say, oh, we've given uh, five, five million naira loans to people. I'm like, why don't you just shoot 10 films in a particular state and give a budget of, say, 50 million, 100 million? Uh, on that production, you train electricians, I mean, gaffers, you train mm -hmm. uh, cinematographers, you train scriptwriters, mm -hmm. you train, you have caterers working, you have carpenters working. Um, so the, the, the food chain of one production, you know, you can have like 50, 60 people working on it. True. And everybody who earns something, True. some people get some education. The, the state or the location can be well marketed. You see it on, on, the, on, on, on TV. I'm like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know a home uh, cave can be this beautiful. I didn't know Obunike cave can be this fantastic. I want to go visit. I want to see it. Sure. Um, and I think that's, that's something that enables a lot more people um, you know, within the ecosystem and even outside of it to benefit. True. From, from and like, like that's what we do. Like we believe that whatever we're doing here, we believe that training or capacity building without giving young people so access when, to when, finances. When is the next any? And November 21 to 25th. But before then, before the November thing, we've been you know, organizing training. We just finished um, um, skill acquisition on how to use smart, your smartphone to yeah, make to things content, yeah. and um, how to reimagine folklores or folk tales um, to fit a wider audience in Oka. So the next stop is Enugu, Nsoka, Abba, mm. Omahia. So what we are doing is to give them capacity building, mm. then create access because training without giving people. The, that my dogs are barking. Uh, it's okay. I think there's someone coming. That's Sorry. good. Dumb. You know, I saw that thing where uh, Governor Saludo was like, <laughs> <laughs> but, so, my dogs are... Uh, it's but okay. anyway, you're safe. 
no problem. That I, I, of course, <laughs> I'm in your house, so I'm safe. Yeah. So training people without giving them access yeah. to opportunities, you know, mm. uh, giving them platforms or giving them resources to own their own crafts, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a waste of opportunity. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Train them, then give them access so to we're gonna, opportunities. So we're going to end. Um, um, guys, we, we're ending soon, so it's going to be interesting. But I, just to end, just to ask you mm -hmm. um, a very direct question. We're all going to go someday. We're all of us. I mean, the only thing we know in life is, I think they said, death and taxes, Abby. <laughs> um, well, you know, when someone remembers you when someone closes their eyes how'd you like to be remembered a mother a mother yeah when i say mother like it's you can give her life that. exactly and the in the in the principle of unya and one mm. so a mother gives and keeps giving irrespective of the challenges so what i want to do for southeast especially young people is to give them life when i mean life to breathe life into their skills so they can say, yes, I have something to look back on and stand on my feet. Thank so, you so much. Uju Aku Akukwe, a mother, a storyteller, a curator of social experiences and cultural experiences. Um, someone who's committed yeah. to training, to building people up. Thank you so much for Thank joining you, me. Thank you for today. having me. Um, Appreciate shall we, um, yes. shall we um, clean glasses one more time? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. And um, to you guys watching, um, you can always catch us in the next episode. Um, these are my friends. I'll bring uh, another friend of mine who will join me in sharing my wine, my palm wine, my OG, my cola. And then um, you guys at home, just, you know, cheers. See you, uh, see you next week. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>